Today's message is New Testament Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 19 and verse 24 through 30. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 19 and 24 to 30. As I read through today's message, I hope all of you will listen to the voice of a living God. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wells to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with the two bags of gold gained two more, but the man who had received the one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled the account with them. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered the seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered the seed? Well, then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Amen. Today's scripture of parables of the bags of gold is well known even to the non-believers. It has been a source of insight and lessons for many. Parables of Munas in Luke chapter 19 deals with the same story as today's message, but the Matthew is the only books of the Bible to use the unit of bags of gold. And Matthew chapter 25 deals with the parables of bags of gold. In fact, this parable is a little bit more relevant and appropriate for the Advent because the whole chapter of Matthew 25 deals with eschatological content of waiting for the kingdom of God. Let's look at the structure of the last part of the Matthew. Matthew consists of 28 chapters, and chapter 26 and 28 describe the final scenes of Jesus' life, suffering, crucifixion, and resurrection. In other words, the, what happens after, after the suffering of the Jesus are well described in the chapter 26 and afterwards. So the chapter 25 is the last part of the sermons. In particular, the chapter 25 deals with three different sermons of Jesus. It contains three parables. The first parable is about five wise virgins who prepared oil and five others who haven't. That is from verse 1 to verse 13. And from verse 14, it follows the parables of bags of gold until the verse 14, 14. And from 31 to verse 46, the last parable is about the judgment when our Lord comes to the earth to separate people from the left to the right, just as shepherd separate the sheep from the goats. And the first and the last parables describe what will happen at the last moment when the Son of Man comes to the earth, and what will happen when the bridegroom came before the wedding. So it's about what will happen at the end of the world. And in the first parable of the ten virgins, it shows who are prepared and who haven't on the day of when the bridegroom comes. And in the last parables of the ships and goats, it also shows 
uh, those who prepared for the for the day when our Lord came. So these two parables teach us we have to keep watch and be ready. So it's more about some warning to be ready. And in between, there is parable of backs of goals. And it also deals with some the important day when their master return. But at the same time, it, in, it contains some other moment that is time when their master left and on, he returned. And we can see the time gap between the two. In other words, this parable of bags of gold starts from the moment when the master entrusted the bags of gold to the servants and left, and he re and to the moment he returned. And this is about how we consume the time in between wisely. When I was younger, whenever I read these parables, I had one thought to myself. I think it's very natural for those who received two, five bags of gold are working hard, and he earned another five bags of gold, and the one with the two bags of gold, he earned another two bags of gold, and the one with one bag hides it underground and is gold by the master. I think that uh, for me, it seems very natural because the one who have five bags of gold, that means he got, he earned the trust from the master. So he, it is good, good motivation for him to work hard. And the one with the two bags of gold, even though it is smaller than the five gold, five gold bags, but the bigger than the one bags of gold. So he still have some incentive or motivation to work hard. But the one with one bags of gold might be unwilling to work hard, and he couldn't find any motivation. So he do not, he do not want to lose any of it. So it might be very natural for him to hide it, to keep the original value as it is. If you try to understand this story from this perspective, then this parable seems incomplete and unfair. Because some are given five bags of gold, some others two bags of gold, and others one bags of gold. If that is there is a difference in the give in the given, then we can expect we, we it is very natural for us to expect different result. But the key message of this parable does not come from how many bags of gold they have received. That's not the essence of this story. If you pay attention to the different numbers of bags of gold, then we might lose, the sight, lose sight of an important message. Everybody receives different amount of gold, but there is one thing they have received in common, that is time. From the moment their master entrusted bags of gold to them and left to the moment his master returned, they are given the same amount of time. That's the essence of these parables. And Matthew chapter 25 starts as follows. At the time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And it have some the parables of the heaven, and then they start the second parables, which starts as follows. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. There is one word hidden in this verse, that is kingdom. So here, while the Jesus describes the kingdom of heaven, he starts describe it with the parables of ten virgins and continue to describe it with the parables of bags of goats and also continue to describe it with the sheep and the goats. So we can interpret verse 14 in this way. Kingdom of heaven is like when a person goes to a foreign country, he calls his servants and entrusts his wealth to them. 
kingdom of heaven starts when a person goes to a foreign country, he calls his servant and entrusts his wealth to them. This is when the kingdom of heaven starts. The first parables of ten virgin says that when the rich groom comes, it goes to when the kingdom of heaven comes. And in the parables of the ships and goats, when the Lord came down to earth is when the kingdom of heaven starts. But in this parable of backs of goals have a different, par different analogy. The kingdoms of heaven is like, is starts when the master left after entrusting his wealth to servants. And there is a clear moment when master returned. And many consider that's when the kingdom of heaven comes. But in fact, kingdom of heaven starts when the master goes to a foreign country and entrusted his wealth to servants. So it is a little different from the other parables. According to the interpretation of the German reference Bible published by the Bible Society of Germany, Unlike the previous parables, which contain warnings such as staying awake or preparing for the end, this parable of bags of gold requires wise use of the time remaining until then. From the standpoint that God's reign has been proclaimed and has already begun, it is important to do what is worthy of God's rule and what is possible from God's rule here and now. For this, each must work with the talent that God has imparted in the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. That's right. What we have to pay attention to in this parable is time. Our Lord gave us the time. Of course, our reality has been reflected in the story. Some are having five bags of gold, others two bags of gold, and still some others have just one bags of gold. That's our reality. All of us are in different health state. Our health conditions are different, and our physical structure are different, and we are born to all different environment, and we are born to different condition. We are not born to the same condition. That's the reality that we have. And that reality is well reflected in the numbers of bags of gold. So we can say it's not discrimination, but reality. So the German reference Bible also add this interpretation. But he who makes excuses for lack of innate talent and in the end in the end refuses to do anything, take no risk or perhaps also not get a finger dirty, will be doomed. Without looking at it from the point of time from the point of an equal opportunity just to live by the complaining about the numbers of bags of gold that's not a wise way to live and here we can find the first misunderstanding of the one who had received one bag of gold that is it's unfair for me receiving small less he believes Lord didn't love him. The Lord didn't trust him. He just to pay all his attention to the numbers of bags others have. In fact, all of us are living in all different environment. Some are rich, some are powerful, and some are female, and some are young. That means we don't need to make a complaint while looking at what others have, because our Lord created all different, and He gave us uh, the bags of gold differently. And that's the gift of our Lord that is given to us by our Lord. And those who received one bag of gold, 
is not is not the thing that he worked to earn it. That is the same for those who had five bags of gold or two bags of gold. They just receive it. This is not what you earn out of hard work, but it's given to you. So what we pay attention is not how much you have received, because how much you have received is not your control. It's our Lord's control. This is His responsibility. So what we can control is not how many bags of gold we have received, but the time given to us. The time given to us is our responsibility and our authority. We have time given by our Lord. So we have time to work with the gift given by our Lord, whether it's big or small. So we have time to work with it. The time has been given to all of us equally. So we have time until the master return to count it. So the year of this year is the time of this year is also gift. No matter what, we have received the year of 2022 as a gift. What we will do in this time, what we harvest in this time, that's the task given to us. And there is another misunderstanding understanding of the one who received one bag of gold, and he dig a hole in the ground to heat all the bag of gold in the ground, and all the time have stopped there. He had wasted his time. No matter how long time given to him, he cannot make any influence over the bag of gold given to him. He missed out his opportunity. So verse 27, the master said that, you should have put my money on deposit with a banker so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. Interest equals to the time here. You can do anything to enjoy the benefit of time. If you are not willing to do something with it, then you can just deposit it to someone else to make most of the time. That's the point what master tried to deliver. This servant here missed out the opportunity of time. So the second misunderstanding is about the first part of verse 24. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man. He said, he called the master a hard man. That is originated from the scalos, which means stubborn, obstinate, and dry. We have, if you understand this parable is about the kingdoms of heaven, then you can understand what it means. The servant to the Lord, to the master, he says that you are hard man, you are stubborn, you are obstinate. To the servant, master is such kind of a person, very stubborn and making no changes and hate to see any laws. That's how the servant understands and sees his master, and which is misunderstanding. That forced him to dig a hole to hide his bag of gold. Because the master is so stubborn, so he was afraid what happened if he take the risk and lose some money. So he clearly misunderstand his master. Verse 25 says, I was afraid. The reason why he hide the money, he was afraid of the master. If he lose any gold given to him, he thought his master would punish him or uh, strongly scold him. So he just to keep the value as it is, and he believed, even though I cannot make any profit out of it, but I just to keep the original value, so I just made halfway through. 
but the master had a different thought. He didn't entrust his wealth to the servants to make profit. He just gave a chance to take part in the work of the master. Otherwise, he may deposit it to the bank to get the principal with interest in a safe way. However, he didn't take the other way. He entrusted his wealth to the servant, five bags of gold, two bags, and one bag of gold. And he said he is giving a chance to take part in the work of him. He asked his servant to be the partner of his task. That's the meaning of five, two, and one bags of gold. From the perspective, the servant has become a wicked and lazy servant because he hadn't carried out the work given to him by his master. His master gave him a chance to take care of his money and take part in the work of his master. He failed to carry out that honorable and precious work. That is a second misunderstanding of the servant. And he made one more misunderstanding. That is, then the man who had received one bag of gold, master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And there is one important sentence here. Harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered the seed. That is his misunderstanding and misjudgment. And he said that you have harvested where you have not sown and you also have gathered where you have not scattered the seed. What does it mean? There might be two different interpretations. That means he's such a miser and at the same time, it also means that he's rich enough, not harvesting. He can be rich without harvesting. And that means he's really capable and he's wealthy. And the one bag of gold that I may earn by working hard with the one bag of gold is nothing. Whatever the meaning is, the servant misunderstands. The harvesting where you have not sown is the source of misunderstanding. There are times in our lives when we dream of making a lot of money. And sometimes we think of ways to make money without working. We try to find ways sometimes to rip a lot without sowing. And sometimes we sow such kind of people in reality. And this point of view may be standing out when we are working the work of Almighty God. Because He is Almighty, He does not sow without reaping. He, he will sow without reaping, and He can get the result without process. And sometimes we can misunderstand. We can misunderstand. We can generate the result without taking the process. However, the most important lesson we can get from this parable is the other way around. When we work for the kingdom of heaven, when we try to get some result with the bag of gold given to us, we must sow the seed and we must nurture it. Our God is almighty, so it's okay. We can do it without any process or without sowing. And because God is almighty, he will do anything. It seems big belief sometimes, but it can also cause big and huge anger of the master. So it is wrong way of thinking. We have to realize it. So whenever we involve in the honorable task of the Lord, we have to plant and we have to nurture. Our Lord wants us to sow and nurture it. The planting means we join in the work of, of, of our Lord. And the planting also means joining in the work of our Lord. 
the misunderstanding of the servant receiving one bag of gold is that our God can do anything because He's Almighty, so I don't need to do anything. But it brings huge anger to Him. That is the message we can learn from this message. Let's sum it up. Please do not waste any time given to us by the Lord while looking at how many bags of gold you have received. Do not pay attention how many of gold others are having. While we are looking at it, we are wasting our time. Please remember that. Please do not think our Lord as stubborn and obstinate. He is creative and flexible, flexible, and thinking about joining in the work of His work. He is not stubborn, and He always join in the work that we are doing for the kingdom of heaven. He refreshes us every day. And if we are doing something, He help us, He join us, and help us harvest wonderful fruits. The third lesson is that the one principle of the kingdom as well as the principle of this world is that the one who sows reaps. Our Lord is not the one who sow without planting. And he who sows in tears in early spring reaps abundant fruit in autumn. This law is eternal and contains the great will of God. Those who plant good will reap good. And those who plant the kingdom of heaven will see the kingdom of heaven. And those who sow in tears reaps abundance. Whatever they sow, they will gather and harvest. Those who don't planting, they will, there will be nothing for them to harvest. While we are spending the very beginning of the new year and waiting for the Lunar New Year, let's think about and counting the time given to us one more time, what to plant, and what to harvest. And let's think about that for today. And just like a famous quote, even if the end of the world comes tomorrow, I will plant an apple tree. That is exactly what we need for our life. Until the very last day, last day we have to plant the kingdom of heaven. We harvest the kingdom of heaven here. That's what our Lord wants us to do. Let's pray. Holy Lord, thank you for allowing us the year 2022 and giving us a new time. Please do not let us complain or be arrogant as we see how big we have. Instead, let us cherish the gift of time that you have given us equally and feel in the precious things within that time. Help us to resemble the image of God who always creates new creations. Take away from us the stubbornness of being stuck in something and not getting out of it. In this precious time you have given us, let us sow seeds every day and allow the fields to be harvested. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.